Hello students, welcome to our afternoon read aloud. Today we are going to enjoy another book about Johnny Appleseed, but this book is a little different, so I want you to pay close attention and see if you notice what's a little different about this book about Johnny Appleseed. So, if I sneak peek the cover, I can see, oh, a picture of a, an older Johnny Appleseed, also with a pot on his head. And look, balanced on the tip of the handle is an apple. How about that? And on the back, there he is holding an apple. Let's see if I open the whole book, if you can kind of see. It's like a continuous picture from the, remember the parts of the book, from the front to the back, across the spine, right? It's a continuous picture. He's balancing an apple here and holding up an apple there. And there's a blurb on the back. Let's take a look. Of Jonathan Chapman, two things are known. That he loved apples, that he walked alone. Hmm, okay, let's see. Johnny Appleseed. Oh, and look at the end papers. I can see an apple if I open the paper cover a little bit. Here the apple is full, and then bite by bite, the apple is disappearing. <laughs> How about that? Until only the core, the core, right? That's the word for the center of the apple. The core is left. Here we go. Oh, I have to fix the pages back again, fix the cover. Here we go. Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed by Rosemary and Stephen Vincent Benet, illustrated by S.D. Schinder. This is a Margaret K. McEldry books. And notice, this is a, a big picture that shows lots of things. It kind of shows a little bit downhill. The land is a little downhill. And there's Johnny Appleseed in the middle, walking with his pack with his walking stick and the pot on his head and his clothes are kind of ragged there, see? Oh, and there's a neat detail. The O has a little stem and a leaf, like an apple. Okay. Oh, and look on this page, there's a little detail of some apple blossoms, the flowers on an apple tree, and there's a bee going to enjoy some pollen. Oh, here we go. And there's the old guy again. Looks like he's been eating an apple because he's got some in his mouth. Mm -mm, some apple, and there's the core. Here we go. Of Jonathan Chapman, two things are known. That he loved apples, that he walked alone. Okay, and look, they're using the apple for the letter O. Oh, look, there he looks very playful. Like he's juggling apples. At 70 odd, he was gnarled as could be, but ruddy and sound as a good apple tree. So gnarled means when someone's kind of, something is twisted. And so it's saying that, you know, he was old. Maybe he had old bones, but he was still lively. And there's his ax and his shovel. Oh, and there's a little fox peeking at him. For 50 years over of harvest and dew, he planted his apples where no apples grew. Okay, so you can see all the holes that he's digging to plant apples. And look, it's like there's a little raccoon. The raccoons are peeking at Johnny. The winds of the prairie might blow through his rags, but he carried his seeds in the best deer skin bags. Okay, so it's saying it, it's windy and he, his clothes may have gotten ragged, but he used kind of a good bag to protect the seeds because the seeds were important to him. Deer skin, so it was made from the, anim, from the skin of a deer, right? And there he is examining the, ap, the seeds, the apple seeds to make sure they're good for planting. From Old Ashtabula to Frontier Fort Wayne, he planted and pruned and planted again. Okay, so these are the different steps. Planting, plucking the apples, 
Maybe here as the saplings grow up, you prune them. Sometimes you have to trim parts of the tree that aren't growing well to make the rest of it grow really well. That's called pruning, okay? And here's a map of the United States back then and showing about how he was traveling west through the states that are were called Ohio and Indiana. He had not a hat to encumber his head. He wore a tin pan on his white hair instead. So it's raining and he can protect his head with a pot. Oh, and look there, fenced in are all the little baby apple trees, the baby, the saplings, right? Sapling is a special word for a baby tree. He nested with owl and with bear, cub, and possum. He knew all his orchards, root, tendril, and blossom. Oh my goodness, there's so many lovely details on this page. So all the animals are around him as he rests. And it, there's a special word here, orchard. An orchard is a group of fruit or nut trees, orchard, okay? And then it names some parts of a tree, root, tendril, that's like a little part growing out, and blossom. So there you can see the owl. He's hung all his stuff on the tree branch. And there he is snoozing. And look, there's the possum peeking down. Oh, and all her babies too. Look, isn't it lovely? And there's a little bear hiding in the tree. Oh! I see a covered wagon, right? We've seen that before, kind of as a sign for the idea of people traveling west. A fine old man, as ripe as a pippin, his heart still light and his step still skipping. Okay, so there he's waving to some pioneers, maybe some settlers, and there's their little sapling that they bought. And he's waving goodbye after he sold them some trees, or maybe he gave some away if they didn't have money. The stalking Indian, the beast in its lair, did no hurt while he was there. Okay, see the Native Americans are peeking at him, and so is this wild, kind of like mountain lion. But the idea is that nobody bothered him because they knew that he wasn't going to bother anybody, that he was peaceful. They didn't have to be afraid. Oh, and there's a lovely little cardinal, right? Cardinals like we have here in Virginia. For they could tell as wild things can that Jonathan Chapman was God's own man. I think they mean that he was a, a man of peace. Look, it's like he has a rainbow coming right out of his head because he's peaceful and kind and thinking of everyone. Why did he do it? We do not know. He wished that apples might root and grow. And this is a great picture that shows the steps of the tree growing. He's planting the seed, then there's the sprout, like the brota, yeah? And then the sapling, the baby tree, it's getting bigger and bigger until finally it's big enough that it's dropping apples. And there's a child able to enjoy an apple. He has no statue, he has no tomb. He has his apple trees still in bloom. Oh, so this is a modern day picture showing people maybe on a car trip stopping to buy apples at a roadside stand. Oh, that's so fun to go have a family car trip and then be able to stop at the side of the road and buy things like fruit. Oh, in the fall, sometimes you can buy donuts, right? Consider, consider, think well upon the marvelous story of Appleseed John. Oh, right there, that's making me think about my question at the beginning. Did you notice something about the sound of this book? It rhymed, didn't it? It's a rhyming book. Okay, and so there he is again on the last page, and he's gently pulling down the tree branch so the children can pluck some fruit. So I've got to do something at the end of the book. And one of the things I like so much about Johnny Appleseed is his connection to animals. In stories, it's always talking about how the animals were not afraid of him because he was kind to them. He was actually vegetarian. He didn't eat uh, meat, he, so he didn't eat animals. So animals didn't have to be afraid. 
and I think it's so neat. I'm wondering if on every page, look, there's the fox taking a peek. And this is making a connection to our lesson earlier today about reread to see more. We're not rereading, but we're reviewing. I can see where the fox was. There's the raccoon family peeking in, peeking at him. And on this page, I don't see animals. On this page, I don't see any other animals. But here is the rabbit family, some rabbits peeking in to his orchard, right? Orchard, group of fruit trees. And here are all the animals, I already showed you that, sleeping with him in the tree. And there he is walking along, no animals there because he's just waving at the settlers. But here, the wild mountain lion and her cubs are also peeking in on him. And here, here, there's some birds on the tree sitting with Johnny Appleseed. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this rhyming book about Johnny Appleseed. In fact, this is actually a really old poem. Rosemary and Stephen Vincent Benet were famous writers from a long time ago. And they wrote this famous poem many, many years ago. I should look up and see how old this is and let you know. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, I hope you have a great afternoon. Remember to wash your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house. And I'll see you later. Bye.